Colossians chapter 1, the verse number 12. One day, a pastor friend, okay, who came to visit me, he made a very interesting statement. We were driving from Tema to Accra. Then, when, when we got to his house, I was alighting him. Then he said, Sofu. I counted the number of times you said hallelujah. Holy. Glory to God. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Ah. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Holy. He said, I counted more than 300 times. And I'm saying, yes. He has filled my mouth with praise. Hey. Your bottom cry. Glory. Oh, the crown. Glory. Glory. I see you always say hallelujah. Oh. Awesome. Oh, the... Wonderful. Oh. Excellent. Don't be saying hmm. <laughs> no guilt in life, no fear in death. Sure. This is the part. Listen, it, it is those who are in opposition who talk. Those who are in government, they are eating. When you are eating, you don't talk. <laughs> so find a breath. Jesus. Hey, you ready? Come on. On my way. Me. Me, me. <laughs> no power. Charlie, let's get into the word. People of God, let's get into the word. Colossians chapter 1, the verse number 12. He said, giving thanks to the Father. <laughs> Giving thanks to the Father. So one of the things you must learn is to give thanks. Really? Oh, give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks. You must learn to give thanks. There are so many things you can thank God for. A lot of the mistakes believers do is that they, they are waiting for what they think God should do for them before they will thank God. So fine, breath. But read us. Are you aware that somebody just died now? Are you aware there are people in the mortuary now? Are you aware? Are you aware there are people in, in the hospital now? Are you aware of that? Are you aware there are people who haven't eaten since yesterday? There is nothing to eat. Who the house socks? Who the t-shirt? Who back say we Who cry iPhone? Who nanya miase? I went to a church, you know, many, many years ago as a young pastor. And a very old woman, almost about 80, she was giving a prophecy. And then she said, I'm saying, hey. Now, auntie, I'm not a friend. I'm not a friend. From lies was I've heard God no get grandchildren. Till fine breath. So he said, giving thanks to the Father. Just come The air that you breathe. Destiny. Hey. No power. The legs you have in walking. The hands you have. There are so many reasons why you can give God thanks. Okay. Giving thanks to the Father. Then now Paul begin to tell us why we should give thanks. The specific reason. He said, who has qualified us? Are you not glad that you are qualified? You have never been disqualified. You are qualified. You were qualified based upon the finished work of Christ. That is what qualified you and I. Look at the sins that we have sinned against God. And yet we are still able to come before his presence. What qualifies us is the blood of Jesus. So he says that giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us. Somebody shout and say, I am qualified. Never to be disqualified. He has qualified us. Are you not glad that God has qualified you? That by the work of Christ on the cross, that you have been qualified. So he says that giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us. He has qualified us. I am qualified. Don't see yourself as disqualified. You are qualified. Qualified by the works of Christ. Qualified by the blood of Jesus. That you are qualified. Qualified for what? Who has qualified us to be partakers? To be sharers. Partakers. We are supposed to be partakers. 
of the inheritance of the saints in the light so let's read the scripture again giving thanks to the father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light let's break it down now he spoke about thanking god then he spoke about you knowing that you are qualified then he says that you are qualified to be a partaker you are supposed to partake partake of what the inheritance Jesus the inheritance so you must know what are your inheritance in christ that is the only way you can partake of it you need the knowledge of your inheritance what is it that christ has made available for you and i what inheritance do we have in christ he has made us partakers of the inheritance now please listen if there is an inheritance available for you that you are supposed to be a partaker that you have been qualified then you must know number one that you are an heir somebody shout and say i am an heir you are an heir Jesus Romans chapter 8 verse 17 so let's go to Romans 8 17 we'll come back okay Romans 8 17 you are an heir I want you to look at the scripture we're going somewhere Romans 8 17 you are an heir the heir is the legally qualified man or woman who is supposed to inherit the estate or the inheritance of the testator you are an heir Romans chapter 8 verse 17 Romans 8 verse 17 Romans chapter 8 verse 17 and I read and if children then as as of God and joined as with Christ this is and if children we are as as of God we are supposed to inherit God's estate we are supposed to inherit God's blessings we are heirs of God not only that the Bible says that we are joint he didn't say co joint that means that we owe it with Jesus hundred hundred whatever belongs to Jesus belongs to you and I please listen I am going to make statements that the religious minds cannot take it listen the day jesus saved you when you accepted jesus as your lord and savior after that day he became your senior brother you share one father you belong to the same family jesus is your big bro he's your big bro he's your big brother when you meet jesus he is not just your lord he is not just your god he's your senior brother because if you are joint heirs with christ then it means that you belong to the same family you have the same father and you have the legal right to the same inheritance you are joined as with christ whatever christ has is yours the same power he had is available to you you are joined as with christ somebody shout and say i'm a joint heir with christ let's go to hebrews chapter one hebrews chapter one this this must be your consciousness you know the religious minds will say, Ebe, I will throw Yami. I will answer them. And in Yami, your pair. And he is your pair. Yan Cassie and he is your pill. Yes, in Yami, a Sam say, and he is you. Adi, Adi, and Cravens, oh, Jim. Adi, 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 the inheritance we are joint as Hebrews chapter one, the verse number two. Hebrews 1 verse 2 and I read and in these last days spoken to us by his son whom he has appointed heir of all things Jesus is the heir of all things he owns everything and the Bible says that you are joint heirs with Christ so can I submit to you you own everything 
I said you own everything. Yes. He has been appointed heir of all things. The word is things, things. <laughs> all things belongs to Jesus. Yes. All things belongs to you. Oh, you don't believe it? I... Okay, let me show you another scripture. Go to First Corinthians chapter three, My... the verse number twenty-one. First Corinthians chapter three, <laughs> the verse number twenty-one. First oh, Corinthians chapter three. <laughs> The verse number 21. First Corinthians chapter 3. The verse number 21. Therefore, let no one boast in men. For all things are yours. Do you see that? All things are yours. Don't boast in men. All things are yours. They are yours. The favor is yours. Ah, somebody shout this mine. The favor is what? The peace is what? The eternal life is what? The victory is what? The triumph is what? The prosperity is what? The promotion is what? The healing is what? The wisdom is what? The favor is what? The understanding is all things are yours. They are yours. Now, please listen. If something is yours, do you go and ask for it? No, let's talk. Let's talk. If something is yours, do you go and ask for it? No, no, let's talk. I said, if something is yours, do you ask for it? If the thing is yours, do you have to ask for it? Okay. No, you don't ask for it. So what do you do? You lambano. You take it. The word is lambano. Take it. It's yours. So you see, it informs the way you pray. The healing is mine. The name of Jesus. The victory is mine. I take my victory. I take my wisdom. The wisdom is mine. The Bible says that all things are yours. You don't go and say Radie. Sami Yario. Sami Yario. Radie. Yarie you. Ebe kumi o. Sami Yario. Yes we. Wanye bi bi anfa wa. Ebe wo. Radie. Yeah, my mother. What is our new? He has already purchased your healing. The healing is yours. The Bible says that all things are yours. Listen, this changes the way you think, the way you reason. All things are you, you can never be disadvantaged. All things are yours. I said they are yours. I said all things are. He said things, 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 things. I said no guilty. They are yours. No fear in them. So I'm saying that from Colossians 1 verse 12 that giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance. And I said before you can partake, you must know that you are an heir. Know that you are an heir. Okay, so let's go to Galatians chapter 4. Galatians 4 the verse number 1. No, We are looking at how to inherit. Galatians 4. I'll come back to this same scripture tomorrow. Then we'll get into the inheritance. They will be going. Galatians chapter 4. The verse number 1. Galatians, you are a joint heir with Christ. Fantastic. But look at Galatians. Okay, so let's read Galatians chapter 3. The verse number 29. Then we'll go to Galatians chapter 4. The verse number 1. Galatians 3.29. Then Galatians 4 verse 1. So Galatians 3.29. And I read. And if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed. And as according to the promise, do you see? He said, If you are Christ, that expression means that if you are born again, so when you are born again, you are called Christ. Okay, Christ means the head and the body. You and I, we are the body of Christ. Jesus is the head, the head is the symbol of authority, he's the ogre, he's the boss. Are you we are his body? But you also realize that the head and the body is one. You can't separate my head from my body. Look at the way my head is kono and my body. The head and the body is one so jesus and the church is one you can't separate us that is why you can also say i and my father we are one you are not blaspheming at all you are talking light you are talking revelation i and my father we are one jesus knew his oneness with his father so if you are one with christ and christ is one with his father then you are also one with the father uh, i said did you hear what i said <laughs> No, we are talking word. We are talking scripture. Now, he says that if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed. Then as according to the promise. Now, I say, verse 4, verse 1, chapter 4, verse 1. He said, now I say, the heir, the heir that he was talking about in Galatians 3.29, the heir, as long as he's a child. So, you see, the 
reason why a lot of people are not inheriting is because they, the word is nepios. They are children. You can wheel your brand new Mercedes Benz to your son at 10 years. But would they allow the boy to drive? No. The laws of Ghana does even allow 10 years old to own a license. Even talk about driving. So you see, even though the child is an heir, the child is not matured to be able to inherit what the father has made available. You see, so the issue is that you must grow into your inheritance. You have to grow. Some of you, if God gives you $1 million today, you will stop praying. I'm telling you, you will stop. Uh, All you say is that, oh, pick here. From life. We used to pray with him those days. Yeah, but now, you know, we don't pray like that again. You will stop praying. Uh, Meanwhile, God has more than $100 million for you. He tested you with $1 million. Uh, no. You, you stop praying. Uh, Some of you, you prayed. You got the marriage. You have stopped praying. Prayer, it is the same prayer that will sustain the marriage. You have stopped. The heir, as long as he's a child, so you determine your growth as long as he's a child. The word is nepios, and that expression are children who don't know how to talk, they don't have the language. I'm sick, I'm down. That if I'm down, shouldn't I say it? You are an heir. But you are in a pews. You don't know how to speak. You lack the language of the spirit. You are an heir. Yes. But you are in a pews. You are a baby. A mother one. You don't know how to talk. As long as he's a child, he doesn't differ from a slave. Even though he's the Lord. The Lord. He's the owner of the entire estate. But as long as he's a child. So what, what happens? Verse 2. The Bible says that he is put under guardians and stewards. The purpose of the guardians and the stewards. Uh -huh. They are teachers and they are guiders. They teach you and they guide you. Until the time appointed by the father. So you must grow under the ministry of your teachers. And those who guide you into your inheritance. No fear. So Colossians chapter 1 verse 12. The Bible says that giving thanks to the father. Who has qualified us. To be partakers of the inheritance so know that you are an heir but also understand that as an heir you must grow into your inheritance so tomorrow we're going to look at the different inheritances we have then he says among the inheritance of the saints who are in the light so your inheritance is in the light that word light there is the word your inheritance is in the word so we'll be getting into it and you will see so you have to grow. As an heir, you must grow. How do you grow? The Bible says, exercise yourself unto godliness, unto growth. Quality feeding. Quality feeding. Quality prayer. Those are the ingredients that makes you grow. Quality feeding of the word. Quality fellowship. Quality prayer. Then you are growing. Then you are maturing. Then you are growing. Then you are maturing. Yeah. in me. From life. All right, so we're going to continue tomorrow. This morning, the only way you can become an heir is when you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And I will gladly want to give you that opportunity to make him the Lord of your life. You want to say, Lord Jesus, this morning, thank you for dying for me. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. And I boldly declare that I am born again. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Are you blessed this morning? If there is any question, let us pick it up from here. The Lord bless you. The Lord favor you. God bless you. In Jesus' name, amen.